it actually got like shiver down my spine because I'm like, I've been cooking the same thing for all these different people, but they're not experiencing it the same way because I didn't know that they are different, that they're actually an ingredient in the food, the, their palate. So it's, it's changed kind of the way I've approached cooking ever since. My name is Timothy Roberts. I'm the executive pastry chef of Vox Table, Austin, Texas. The meal plan last night was we, we had a menu that we could, could uh, go two different paths with. Everyone in the base got the same food. Big eye tuna taquito, faux scallop, duck bacon. But for super tasters, we, we made adjustments. A super taster is just a person who has a higher amount of taste buds and a non-taste is a person who has uh, a lesser amount of taste buds than, than your average person. Things that they're averse to are, 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 are vegetables that are bitter, things that are too sweet, salt as well. On the table, there's little white strips. Everyone's gonna need to grab one of these. We administered two different types of test strips that have different chemicals. One is PTC, one is Theoria. So basically they just put the test strip on their tongue and uh, they they either, it'll taste bitter or it'll taste like nothing. And then we also gave them a menu that had uh, different foods on it that are problematic for super tasters and had them kind of check off things. And based on the results we got from all three, uh, we, we kind of dialed in uh, specific profiles for each person. And we're gonna send super taster for a chef? Yeah. Ready okay. Go. We're ready? Okay. We did a duck bacon dish Nor Normal get the sauce, super tasters don't, yes. For the super tasters, we uh, pulled off cherries, we ro uh, pan roasted them with butter, and they started to taste bitter. We we're trying to also do dishes that, that made people also just think about their perception of food, not just the way it tastes, but like, we have a faux scallop dish. It's made from a mushroom, it's steamed with dashi, it's seared so it looks just like a scallop, and then we put a miso glaze on it. And it actually, like, if you close your eyes and eat it, it actually tastes like a scallop. I saw a lot of people on their face, you know, like, that, with their eyebrows go up, and they were just like, wow, you got me. They're like, I understand my palate better. I went to a wine tasting in Napa, and that's kind of what really opened my eyes. Someone explored with me how, how they, they actually introduced the concept that everyone tastes differently, and then they demonstrated it during the tasting, and that kind of really set this in motion. A painting is nothing more than paint and canvas. Food is the same thing, but, but it's the way it's put together and the way you think about it that kind of turns it into art. I think there's going to be an element where to stay relevant in fine dining and even all the way down to fast food restaurants, you're going to need to, to personalize, you're going to need to know your consumer like, like, like Facebook knows people. But I think for the most part, yeah, this is the future. I'll probably spend the rest of my life exploring this.